Hi guys, Sunny Rogers, Emerald Ambassador, and I'm also a social worker. Thankfully, Plexus has given me the freedom to do the only the parts of social work that I really love, and one of them is telling people about emotional intelligence. It's a huge part of social work, and I'm finding it's a huge part of running, running a successful business as well. So, I have been studying all I can about emotional intelligence. Emotional Intelligence 2.0 is a fantastic book. I recommend you buy it new because it has a quiz in the back um, that you can take and it will tell you all about emotional intelligence and where you stand on your emotional intelligence level. But you're like, whoa, Sunny, what is this emotional intelligence thing in the first place? I'm not sold yet. Well, emotional intelligence is something that we all have. Um, we have our personalities, we have our intelligence, our um, personality and our IQ, and we also have EQ, our emotional intelligence. And it turns out it's incredibly important to business. Like it's the number one indicator of personal success. Um, that's huge. And they've also found that each point your EQ goes up, you're gonna earn approximately $1,300 more per year on average. That's huge and very telling for how important this is in our businesses. And since we're talking this month about direct messaging people and connecting with people, um, this is huge. It has so much to do with that. So EQ is something that's moldable. What EQ looks at is our self-awareness, our self-management, our social awareness, and our relationship management with people. Now, um, all of those things put together make up emotional intelligence. And you're like, whoa, that's a lot. You're right. There's no way I'm gonna be able to cover all of that in this video. But I want you to know a little bit about why I think each of those are incredibly important. So what self-awareness is, is when you can accurately perceive your own emotions and understand your natural tendencies to those emotions. Um, anger, anxiety, isolation, shutting down and not working your business. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. This business is a roller coaster of ups and downs and yeses and nos and no answers and our brains are overloaded with emotions when that happens. It's just natural because our brains are designed so that when we have an initial thought, it starts back here in the base of our brain, our most primal part of our brain, the fight or flight place of our brain, our amygdala um, in the limbic system. Lots of emotions go through our minds every time we send, it up, send out a message. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. And from that place, it takes a certain amount of time to get to the prefrontal cortex of our frontal brain where we can think about things rationally. So like when someone doesn't answer our message back, our initial thought is, oh, they hate me. Oh, they don't want this. Oh, this is a bad idea. But really, if we can give ourselves enough time to get to our rational front brain, we realize people are probably just busy or they're running an errand with the kids and just saw it and didn't answer. Or we just haven't connected with them yet on a different level. So we've got social awareness, or sorry, self-awareness. And this is where we can start to pinpoint in ourselves when something comes up and we have an immediate emotion about it. So like if you find yourself really angry, anger is what we call a secondary emotion in my world. And what that means is it's coming from somewhere else. What is that? Are you feeling ashamed? Are you feeling anxious or worried? Where is it coming from? Knowing that in yourself, helps you be a, even more aware of where your actions come from because very, very often our emotions run our thoughts which run our actions. I know you guys have seen this in your own business and that's why emotional intelligence is so important to study and learn and grow in. Um, and then also we have self-management. So self-management, what that is, is using this awareness of yourself to stay flexible and effective in really hard situations. So how many times have we 
wasted hours upon hours of our time worrying about what a message is gonna sound like or worrying about someone's reaction or getting upset that someone didn't message you back or they messaged you back in what you've seemed like was a rude way. This is what self-management looks at. It teaches you how to <sighs> take a deep breath and realize life's gonna be okay and life is going to move on. It gives you time for you to get to that fight or flight emotional place to your rational place where you can think about it more clearly. Um, and then you have social awareness. And this is really important in network marketing because if you see that person that you're about to walk up to and you can tell on their face that they want you to say nothing to them about Plexus. I know you guys, some of you know that look. And if some of you are like, no, I don't know what she's talking about. Social awareness may be something you need to work on personally. And the good thing about this book is it gives you skills that you can individually look at and work on to improve your social awareness. So sometimes that means knowing how to correctly read a message or what someone's trying to tell you, even though they may not be saying exactly what they're trying to say. That makes sense. Relationships are tricky. Emotions are tricky. People are tricky, especially when we're trying to help them see why we care about them and why we're sending them this message in the first place. Okay, so moving on. Social awareness is picking up on others' emotions, knowing what's kind of going on in their head even though they don't necessarily say it. So one of the examples that I like is when you just have a waiter or a waitress who walks up to your table and they just like click with you. They get that you've had a good day or they get that you've had a bad day and they kind of walk up to a table and know if you're the people who want someone to interact with them and get a new best friend or if you're the people who are like, just serve me my food. You know, like I don't need a new best friend or I don't need you to be overly, I don't know, nice to me. <laughs> good waiters and waitresses, pick up on this social awareness, the social cues, the body language that other people are giving off, and they know how to react to that, to get a good reaction out of people. And this is a great skill to have in network marketing, for sure. Okay, so then we tie all of those together into relationship management. This is the biggest part of it. And this is why emotional intelligence is important because we sometimes go straight to the relationship management, but we forget, forget to look at all the other parts. So we've got to look at social awareness. We've got to look at self-awareness and self-management in order to have good, long relationships where people understand you and get you. So relationship management are all three of those put together. So it's the ability to um, use those skills to manage interactions successfully, to have clear communication, and to be effective at change and conflict. And friends, this is not just useful when you're reaching out to people. This is useful for you in working with your teams. We will have conflict, we will have change, and we will need flexibility in order to maintain those positive relationships for sure. Okay, so some of my three, some of my um, very favorite skills that I found out of Emotional Intelligence 2.0, I'm gonna share with you in each of these categories. So hopefully you kind of get the idea about what each of these mean now. So number one, in your self-awareness, I need you to know what your values are. I need you to know why you're reaching out to people. And I need you to do that from your heart. When you're reaching out to people, they need to be able to tell what your values are and why you want them to be a part of your team for their health, for their finances, whatever it is. You need to know your values so that you can correctly portray those to other people. Okay, on that same token, you cannot be fooled by a bad mood. Hear me, this is a roller coaster of a journey. And when you're practicing messaging people, if this is your first time to really reach out to people, or if you've been doing this for years, you know that this is a roller coaster of, of a business. And you know you're going to have bad days, that you're gonna feel like none of it's working, no one wants to hear what you have to say, everyone's taken, you're gonna hear all of those things, and you're gonna have those moods in those days don't be fooled by them. Those moods will pass and a part of self-awareness is knowing that you have them and knowing that you're letting those moods affect your whole day. And before you realize it, you've passed a whole week and you haven't reached out to anyone because of one bad mood day. That's a shame. 
Some of you guys may know uh, Beth Moore. Uh, she does a lot of Bible studies, and I was in one of her Bible studies once, and um, she said, this is for the ladies of this that's listening to this right now. I realize there are lots of men out here listening also, but ladies, she said, um, you can take that thought and it can ride out on the hormonal horse that it rode in on. We have to be honest with ourselves. Hormones have a lot to do with bad moods. Do not let that bad mood color your entire day to where you've missed out on opportunities and sharing one of the best opportunities that I know of. Plex this. Okay. Number two. We have to learn to manage ourselves and those emotions that I was just talking about. Knowing about them is one thing, knowing how to manage them is a completely other thing. So you have to learn to breathe right. And what I mean by that is when you breathe, your chest should not rise more than your stomach. Deep breaths from our gut help us train our brains to go from the emotion side of things to the rational side of things much quicker, straight from the amygdala, amygdala to the prefrontal cortex. And the quicker we can do that, the better our reactions are going to be to people that we're talking to about plexus. Okay, so you've got breathing right. You've got to talk to yourself right. You've got to work on self-talk and, and um, visualizing your success. Our brains do not know the difference between imagining something happening well and it actually happening well. So they did MRI brain scans on people and they had them imagine that they were looking at a sunset and then they had some people looking at an actual beautiful sunset and in the MRI, your brains do not know the difference. It's so important for you to visualize your success and manage yourself. We're not as smart as we think we are. We can control our brains. Okay, so that is our self-management side of things. And again, these are just a few things. I'm trying to go so fast. Um, and then also we've got social awareness. Like I said, this is about being able to read a room, to be able to read people and know what they're thinking, um, and to know when is a good time to share it and when it's not. So social awareness, this is where you have to learn to step into their shoes. And when you're messaging people, you have to realize that people want to know three things when you're messaging them. They want to know first, do you care for me? Second, can you help me? And three, can I trust you? And when we're reaching out to people, if you're doing all of, if you're answering all those questions well, that's when we're moving into the fourth, the relationship management side of things, where we're putting all of those three tasks together. And if we're answering those questions well for them, we're in a good state of relationship management. Um, so we're tapping into all of those things all together. It's a big part of relationship management is acknowledging all of those. All of those, pe all of those pieces and all of those feelings and where those people are coming from. We have to realize not everyone's ready for Plexus right now, but maintaining a good relationship with them is key. Burning bridges because they're not ready right now is not what we want to do. We want to stay in good relationship with people so that they know that we're trustworthy, they know that we care about them, and we know, and they eventually know that we have something that can help them or could potentially help them. So we want to have an open door policy. We want people to realize that they're okay to be skeptical. We want to just message people and ask them their perspective about Plexus. Let them know that we're okay if they're not ready to try it just yet. They'll come around, but we have to maintain those relationships so that people, again, know that we care about them, know that we want to help them, and know that they can trust us. And something that I think is really important for us to pay attention to is, for instance, when someone says no, and they never hear from us again, that is not us telling them that they can trust us, and it's not us telling them that we care about them, and they need to know those things. So you need to maybe check yourself sometimes and make sure you're messaging people with your values and with a pure intent to do something good for them. So people need to hear that you're not always interested in talking about Plexus. Sometimes we just need to build a relationship with them. People want to buy Plexus and buy into this idea from people they love and trust. And we can share that with them. Um, but we, um, and one way to do that is to not always share with a certainty. 
because we know if we're being trustworthy, if we're being honest, we know people that this hasn't really worked for. Usually it's because they don't stick with it correctly, but we know people who hasn't worked for. So we need to be honest with them. You know, I don't know that this is gonna work for you like it has for me, but I can share with you so many, so many other opportunities where it has worked really well. People need to know we're trustworthy. So they need to know that we're going to answer them about their life before we answer them about, about Plexus. Sometimes that's a little trick that I use is I will sometimes answer about their real life and kind of forget that I even asked them about Plexus. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I asked you about Plexus and then answer the question back about that. People need to know you care about them, that you want to help them and that they can trust you. And um, I got those three tips from Everyone Communicates But Few Connect by John Maxwell, which is also a fantastic book to read if you haven't yet um, and again I encourage you to check out Emotional Intelligence 2.0 and to look into that John Maxwell book these are hugely important um, tips for success when it comes to reaching out to people and I'm excited to see where this next month takes us in learning how to reach out confidently and really really well you guys have a good day